Hi there, and welcome to Context Free, where we talk about programming languages. Today, I'm excited to welcome guest Nicolas Canas, who is a game developer and also the creator of the Hacks programming language, and also the virtual machines Nico and Hashlink. Hacks was originally designed as an alternative to ActionScript for targeting the Flash player for making Flash games, but it has evolved far beyond its origins, targeting a wide array of platforms. In style, it looks a lot like C-sharp or Java, but it's more functional. It includes algebraic data types, along with the pattern matching we'd expect from that, and everything is an expression. It also has macros and many other features. As usual before an interview, I'm going to give a quick demo of Hacks. And in this case, I've chosen to use this enum type color, which can be either a red, green, blue, a hue saturation value, or a named color. And I'm going to convert any of these values to RGB. This includes a lookup table for color names, as well as HSV to RGB conversion. I've also taken advantage of this macro that I got from the Hacks website to extract a value out of an enum. Finally, in main, I convert either red, yellow, or blue to RGB, which might be more useful for display purposes. Then I loop through those values and print them out, noting that we have string interpolation here. The build file says where our source is and what our main class is, noting that top-level functions are coming in the next release of Hacks. And here I compile to both C++ and Python. Let's run the build. And note that most of our build time is actually the compiling of C++, not the hack side. If we look at our C++ code that gets generated, we can see the conversion here from HSV to RGB and our main function where we loop through the colors that we specified. If we go to Python, we can see the same thing. The HSV to RGB conversion and our main function. And note that we could convert to many other platforms as well, including C Sharp, Java, PHP, Lua, and Nicola's own virtual machines, Nico or Hashlink. So with the demo finished, let's move on to the interview. And this interview was a live conversation that I edited afterwards. To start with, could you please introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, my name is Nicolas Canas, and uh, I'm a French native and uh, based in Bordeaux and I'm the creator of the Hacks programming language. Awesome, thank you so much. So could you tell us how Hacks got started? Yeah, it's a pretty long story, but uh, back in early 2000s, another company called Motion Twin, and we were making Flash games. And um, we were first uh, not happy with the tool, the compiler of the Flash uh, ID, uh, and uh, we start making a new programming language uh, it was in-house only for building uh, Flash content. Uh, so it was basically just a programming language that was generating Ashram script, which is a language for Flash. And um, then we wanted to use this language to, on the server side uh, because we loved the language. So we wrote a backend for a server virtual machine. And then we had both client and server, and we wanted to, at some point, wanted to add JavaScript because it was a time where JavaScript was becoming a, a real platform language. We know with, uh, it was a time when Internet Explorer 6 was fading out, getting replaced by the new Mozilla Firefox. So really old web times. And so I rewrote most of the, of the language, like to clean up a lot of things because the problem we had was we had two standard library, one standard library for, for Flash client, one standard library for server side. And we noticed that there's a lot of communications going on between the client and the server. And be able to share the data structure and to be able to express, to have actually code sharing between client and server was something that really, that was really interesting. Uh, but it was a bit difficult because of the difference in the standard library. So, so I decided to standardize the standard library to have a single standard library for all the platforms and to add a third platform called JavaScript. So at this time, we had three platforms. We had a platform for server side and database access and system programming, a platform for Flash clients and uh, with graphics and sound, and a platform for JavaScript clients for like uh, DOM manipulation and uh, events and uh, HTML calls. Right? But if HTML5. And uh, so the three platforms uh, were together. From this point, we went open source because I've been doing a lot of open source software and we were using a lot of open source software. So, and some people contribute back some new platforms for the Axe programming language. 
C++, Java, C Sharp, and then later uh, we had uh, Lua and uh, Python. And so the number of platforms have been growing steadily since then, and PHP as well. And more recently, I wrote a new platform called Ashlink, which is a new virtual machine for both desktop and potentially server. And that also has been added as a target uh, for uh, Axe programming language. That's the story of Axe, shortly. So what do you think motivated all of those different platforms? Because it's more than anything else I know of. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think Axe from a programming language point of view is very powerful uh, because when you write a new platform for Axe, it's only have to deal with a specific set of programs, which is implementing the standard library and following the, the language specification, which is actually designed to be run on multiple platforms. So the, the way the language is compiled and the way uh, the language feature are introduced ensure that uh, it can be really easily and uh, very efficiently to implement it on a lot of platforms. And uh, so that means that when you have a platform that you want to, to develop for, for instance, let's say you want to develop for PHP, back in the time when there was no PHP target, you have like a legacy software in PHP or you have to target PHP, but you don't want to use PHP as a language, you want to use PHP as a platform. Then writing backend for Axe for PHP uh, is a small task that once is done correctly, and uh, once people have contributed back to it and its uh, performance have improved, then you can use the whole Axe ecosystem, the tooling, the whole uh, language power, uh, all the features, and um, to, to, to write for the JavaScript platform without to write your own language from scratch. It's really a toolbox that you can use to add a programming language to either a new platform that doesn't have a new virtual machine, for instance, a new runtime, or a platform that already exists and that you are not satisfied with the programming language, the default programming language on it. So does each target have its own maintainer or how does that work? Yeah, we have a different maintainers for different platforms and the compiler team works on the, because we have a X Foundation, which have a compiler team, uh, which handles uh, some aspect which is platform specific sometimes and some features which are more like cross platform. So we have really distinct layers for, uh, for different things. But most of the change we make to the language are automatically cross platform by default. So how do you decide future direction and does the Hacks Foundation have anything to do with this or what is the role of the Hacks Foundation? Yeah, Hacks Foundation is uh, like the official body that runs and that maintains the Hacks programming language. So we have a small team of developers. Uh, I'm running expansion, but I don't, these days I don't do much compiler code anymore. Uh, but um, we decide on, we have two, two things. We have one thing, which is, uh, uh, of course, the issues, all the community contributions. So we have uh, also uh, something called X evolution, when people can write proposals for evolution in the language. So we have, we have led them on a, regular basis to and decide uh, which one will be included in the, in the language. And we also have, of course, our own discussion as a compiler team to discuss the evolution of the language. So it's based on both community feedback and community proposals and uh, compiler team discussions and proposals uh, inside the team. Uh, so is Hashlink likely to replace Nico entirely or are they likely to both be maintained? I think that's, that's the goal. The only, Nico was my first virtual machine that I wrote and it was dynamically typed at runtime, even if you could have a statically programming, type, a programming language on top of it. So the, the performance was not, were not so good. And uh, so Ashlink is much, much more efficient. When I make my games, all the, all the games I make are running on Ashlink on desktop. And one thing that we, because I don't do much web development these days. So right now we haven't yet worked on integrating Ashlink as a virtual machine on the server side. There is no like the CGI or the, or the integration uh, in Apache or like this to be able to run it as a web server component. And uh, so that's something I haven't done that would make Nico still relevant right now for this kind of usage. 
But apart from that, uh, Ashlink is really superseded Nico in, uh, in every other way. So a lot of the community of hacks is around game development. Uh, how much uh, non-game development do you see or like what's your favorite thing you've seen hacks used for that's not game dev? Oh, sure. The game development aspect is, I guess, mainly because of historical aspect, because Motion Twin the, and the, the companies have been working on make games because that's my main activity. And so, I guess, because we wrote several libraries for, for games and games engine, it naturally attracts uh, people making games. But Axe itself is a technology that can be used for many different things. And uh, for instance, we have at Axe Foundation, we have uh, one of our partners is uh, TiVo, uh, which does like set-top box for uh, recording and viewing TV. And it's really like a small piece of hardware with a very la like low CPU and the memory footprint. And they managed to run Axe for all the UI. And uh, so the, everything is run using Axe and compared to C++. Uh, so all the UI specs, all the communication with the backends, etc. It's more than 1.5 million of co line of code that is written in Axe. And it's not in the gaming sector. They are already doing that to power their set-top box, their, their boxes. So it's a really interesting aspect to, to see how Axe can be used also as a high-level language to target very low-end devices. Awesome, that's really cool. So the original Hacks compiler and still today is written OCaml. I saw there's recent plans to rewrite the Hacks compiler in Hacks. What's the motivation for that? And how, does it, how do you think it's gonna go? Yeah, it's a bit like a, a thing we've been discussing for the past 10 years. So I will not say that it's something which is going to happen soon, but we've been discussing it several times and uh, every, every discussion we are actually trying to understand why, what we want and what we don't want. So the reason originally for Okamo was because, you know, when the Axe language doesn't exist yet, you have to start with something else by definition. So you need another language to bootstrap the thing. And, uh, and I was familiar with Okamo and I think it's a very good and very efficient programming language to write compilers uh, because of the functional aspects and it's very fast, very, very fast. So right now Axe compiler can compile thousands of class in terms of few less than a second or something. So it's very, very efficient. And thanks to, in part, to Camel and, uh, and the Camel runtime. And um, so we want to keep this efficiency. Uh, and at the same time, there's been requests from the community to be able to contribute more and to get started more with the compiler development to be able to, to write it in Axe because it will make sense for a community perspective to be able to contribute back to Axe with the same language. But then Axe has not been designed with a very particular aspect of being able to write compilers. So it will require the number of features such as, you know, we're using a lot of the uh, pattern matching for lists, like non-destructive lists in OCaml, which is very, very important for, for the compiler. And uh, so we will need some kind of additional language constructs to be able to, to rewrite entirely as an X compiler in Axe. And that's something we, we're trying to still figure out what's the best way forward to, for this. Yeah, I saw you recently added tail recursion to hacks. So is that sort of the same kind of motivation was getting closer to OCaml? Yeah, that's part, that's part of it. That's something we were looking at. And also as an optimization uh, technique because on several platforms, uh, tail recursion really does optimize things up in terms of uh, runtime cost. Some uh, platforms does it natively and then you don't have to worry about it, but some platforms don't. And for that don't, having this under at a higher level by the compiler gives a really uh, speed boost and uh, more efficiency on the, on the way the code runs. Okay, that makes sense. What's most exciting to you in the future for Hacks? And or do you have any other kinds of closing words that you'd like to share? Yeah, w one thing we uh, excite me about the current things we're working on is uh, introduction into the language of coroutines, uh, which is a way to do asynchronous programming in a very nice way and high level. And uh, we want to introduce this in a way that it's, even if the platform doesn't support uh, coroutines, it will automatically generate a state matching that implements the coroutine in a transparent manner without the user having to read about it. So it's really, I'm really looking forward to, to this into the language.
because I think it will solve a lot of problems and bring a very nice high level features to, to all Axe developers. And uh, well, for the closing word, I guess if you haven't tried or heard about Axe, you should try it, especially the macro parts, which is awesome in my opinion. <laughs> I'm biased, but, <laughs> and uh, yeah, give it a try and, and, uh, and if it works for you, just program with it. That's it. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you, Thomas. Okay. Bye. Bye. Have a nice day. And you too.